go live. I'm alive and the world shines for me. Today I'm alive and the sun shines up and I don't know that one that well. Hey, good morning. I was thinking earlier I will share this with you as I tune in here. Beth, Destination Decluttered. <laughs> So as I was getting myself ready here to do my TikTok live here, good morning, good morning. Um, social media, filters, <laughs> aging. <laughs> I was thinking if I, if I pay, pay, spend too much time worrying about what my neck is going to look like, I'm not going to be getting anything done today. So I've got a neck, it works. You've got a neck, it works. Doesn't matter what it looks like. And it's so freeing, you know. Good morning, German Maid and Strawberry Life of Mom3. Call me Pat. Nice to see you and Lee and Dana and Stacy and Rach and Kelly Joe and Sushi Schmooch and Family and Debbie. This is the romper room portion of the show that I like to say because it reminds me of uh, being a kiddo in uh, growing up as a Gen Xer and uh, watching Miss Jean on the on the TV. Um, yeah, it's fun. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Teresa and Eric and um, all the people in Puppet Land. Good morning. My name is Beth. I am um, a decluttering life coach, Destination Decluttered. I am going to help you declutter this Saturday, right today. All right? Um, now, here's a funny thing. So I work with one-on-one -on -one clients. I always do this as this is like one, two, two little dolls. One-on-one. Um, -on -one from via Zoom, and many of my clients work during the week, you know, and so they say, well, I can't do a lot during the week because I'm tired when I get home from work. Totally get that. Totally get that. When you don't have energy, when you're not feeling well, things can seem much more difficult. On the flip side, when you have a little bit more energy or when you think you are, that's when you tend to schedule some of these things. So good morning, everybody. And, um, and I just want to help you with this because I know what it's like to say, okay, I didn't do a lot during the week, but this is the weekend. I'm going to kick the world's H -E -W, uh, <laughs> A dollar sign, dollar sign, right? Dollar. Listen to me. Dollars. Dollar bills, y'all. And so I want to help you today, this Saturday, this kind of chilly, uh, damp Saturday that I am in Pennsylvania, help you with your decluttering. Now, you may ask, how can you help me with your decluttering? You're not in my house. I'm not, but I can I can hang out in your head with you because that this is where it all this is where it all began, as uh, Mike Viola would say. This is this is your head, your head, your your heart, and your hands in that order, pretty much. Sometimes these ones have a little bit of they dance the tango. Sometimes they switch around, but I want to just let you know that there's a different way of thinking and feeling about your clutter and your stuff and what you're doing. Um, that might be able to help you make it, make it easier. The only reason I'm showing up, honestly, besides encouraging you to, if you want me to be your coach, you know, get in touch with me. But I want to show you, I want to teach you, I want to share with you how it can be easy and, dare I say, fun to declutter. Now, I have a number of clients that have said to me, it's crazy, they'll resist it at first, but then they knew they needed help. And now they're like, oh my gosh, I'm actually excited to do this. I'm actually looking forward, you know, through the windshield, not the rear view mirror, but the windshield. I'm looking forward to going through that stuff so that I can make a decision on it and get the stuff out of my home and my life. Rehome the things, the things that don't work for you anymore. They don't work for you anymore. That's okay. That's okay. Getting comfortable with, getting comfort and ease and muscle to make it easy for you to just recognize when things aren't working for you and to do something about it. Okay. Now you may say, this is kind of weird. She's not talking like a, just a regular, you know, professional organizer or stuff like that. That's because I'm also a um, certified life coach and I got my certification specifically because I know from first-hand experience, from second-hand experience, from third-hand experience, how much your, your head and your heart impacts how your home looks. So if your head and heart, if you're, you're saying to yourself, I don't really, uh, I've got a lot of stuff, I don't know what to do with it, but I'm here to help you. So shoot me a question. Put something in the comments. I see a lot of people joining. Good morning. Maybe you're just hanging out in bed or, you know, fixing your coffee, looking at the TikToks. I'm going to be here for the next hour or so. And one of the things I want to um, I want to suggest with you and, and just, you know, kind of offer it up is 
a lot of folks who shine up like ggx2000 nice to see you and people who have who have tuned in and know know what i do i pretty much will sit here and keep you company this morning for the next 55 minutes so if all you need is a little buddy system a little bit of oomph a little bit of grab your grab your cup of tea or coffee and get going feel free to just put me on in the background and go around and do some decluttering now i'll share this with you um Okay, Shula is asking, how do I part with things that were expensive, purses, accessories, etc.? Okay, I want you to think, and I want everybody to realize this, that we have certain stories in our heads that make us feel a feeling, and we feel a feeling, we do a thing. Now notice, this is one of the few times I would say, look at the screen, because I'm pointing at my head, pointing at my heart, pointing at my hands. But I'm doing it at both sides, because I like to think of this as kind of like this bilateral symmetry, this... You know, this, you've got unhelpful thoughts that make you feel, uh, that make you hang on to stuff that you know you don't want anymore. On the other hand, on the flip side, think of this, bilateral, two sides of the coin, three coins in a fountain, two sides of the coin. Better thoughts, more helpful thoughts, more helpful feelings, you're going to reduce it. So what I want to suggest to you is, um, you are thinking you're going to feel bad because you are, you are rehoming something that you spent money on. Yeah, because you know what? Sometimes we don't get our money back. We spend money on things. Spending versus investing. Spending money means you, you give somebody your money, you get the thing. That is where the transaction ends. So this is where I want to encourage you to get comfortable with the thought and the feeling of, hey, I enjoyed that thing while I did, and yes, I spent a lot of money on it, but it's time for me to take it out of my home and get it closer to somebody else's. Now, if some things were truly expensive and the value of them are valuable to other people, maybe you can consider consigning them, selling them, auctioning them, things like that. However, if nobody else is going to pay the money you paid for it and you want to release it, you got to work on up here and up here, right here, down here, just here. And say to yourself, you know what? They do this in business all the time. The sunk cost, somebody called it a fallacy. I need to look that up. But but realizing you sunk money into something, hanging onto it does not give you your money back unless you are hanging onto it to sell it. I have sold things before. It works, but it takes some effort to get your money back. You have to decide whether your space and your time and your effort and your energy is going to be equal to the money you may get back for that stuff. Now, only you can answer that. And only you can feel that way, okay? So get more attuned to what's in your head and what's in your heart, and then you can begin to un untwine. I was say untwine like a ball of twine. Unravel what's going on. So you do the thing that's going to make you feel better. Pretend the things you spent money on were free. You picked them up off of a free table. How would it feel different for you to then put it in a box or a bag to donate somewhere? Notice the difference. It's a different story, creates a different feeling. You'd be more likely, oh, yeah, I got that for free. No big deal. It doesn't work for me. But then you're like, oh, I spent $10,000 on that. I don't know, $10,000. Um, so hope that helps. Okay. German maid is still working on my shed clean out. Rock on. I love it that you're continuing the journey. Slow going. Finally seeing results. Yeah, sometimes we want it to be done sooner than it is, and it isn't. But I love that you keep on showing up and doing it a little bit at a time. I'm not, is this? No, I don't. I have a mug that says every little bit helps on it. This one's good. Drive your life, co-pilot. Yeah, sometimes you don't see results until you've been doing something a while. I say that to myself because I think of eating and exercising that you want it to be like, look, I ate a salad. Aren't I fit yet? Eh, sometimes things take longer than we want, but it's worth it to go on the journey. Um, I love it. Kara is rocking on. So Kara has been tuning in to these TikTok lives that I've been doing, I don't know, the last couple weeks, month or so. A time, time keeps on slipping into the future. And Kara is um, kind of decluttering because she's got a destination in mind, a goal in mind of I want to have fewer things in my home a good goal, but I'm also going to see if I can donate because she says sort, sell, and savers. So notice that category. Some things you're going to, you got to sort them out. And I love how you're using the alliteration because I'm a fan of that. Destination decluttered, surface stored, sentimental. Makes it easy to remember it. 
But selling or savers, do I want to take the time to sell this? Yes, I do, because I think somebody will spend money on it. And then the money uh, that Kara is getting for her stuff, she is buying um, local plants. I always want to say indigenous, native plants, native local plants for her, her yard with the money she's doing. So that's encouraging her to use that money for something she wants now that isn't the stuff. Or sometimes you get a thing and you're like, oh, this isn't worth my time or effort or nobody's going to pay any money. That's when you donate it somewhere. So notice the different ways you can release it. But having a destination in mind, having a reason, a why, as some people say, why am I going to even do this? Come up with a reason that feels good to you, that kind of ignites a spark, kind of like turns the you know, key in your ignition, gets your engine going like, yeah, okay, I will share you. Um... Uh, okay, I will share with you a story, and then I'll get to, um, yes, uh, let's see, okay, somebody says, Kay is saying, or Kai, excuse me, I'm having a hard time selling stuff on Facebook Market. Could it be my location? It could. Um, 007 is saying the same thing, me too, but I think so many people have so much stuff that they just don't want anything. Could be. Maybe that's why I have I have started to do the decluttering. I, I'll share with you guys. Not Not showing off, but just a statement of fact. I tend to be an early adopter of certain things. So if you're starting to declutter now, you are ahead of the game, okay? And what I want to offer to you, both K, if Facebook Marketplace is one of the ways you can sell things, but you are restricted probably to the people in your market. Um, so notice that. Notice if people around you want to buy what you're selling. Now, I'm a mid-century modern lover, but I live in, you know, suburban Pennsylvania, suburban Philadelphia, there are very few mid-mod people like me here. So when I go to try to sell some of my cool stuff here, people are like, what is this? If I went to the thrift, if I went to the yard sale, what do they call that, the flea market in Palm Springs? Oh boy, would people love my stuff. So sometimes it depends on what you want. So sometimes it depends on what the people around you want. Sometimes it's the season. I love that you're trying to sell your stuff. Giving it a shot, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Then you're going to decide, do I want to continue selling this stuff or just rehome it okay oh i love it id princess one of my clients good morning good morning to you too my dear so glad i found you as a coach and so worth it oh i love working with you i love working with my clients i'm telling you it is just it lights up my life like debbie boone you know so nice to see you and it's early for you because we're a few states away aren't we we'll get good 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 on you i love it leah is taking car loads to donate yeah, can't give it away. Everyone has stuff. You know what? Leah is, I just moved and I'm making a rule as I put stuff away. If I'm not using it now, I'm getting rid of it. I love that. And I also love, Leah, that you said you just moved and um, you are doing another declutter. Many people, if you are moving, you are only making a best guest effort at what you think you might need from your current home in life to your new current home in life. Feel free to shed the things. What's that thing when you're in a rocket ship? Anybody been in a rocket ship? Not me. But they, there, was, there was a word they used where it's like you jettison. You know, you jettison the heavy stuff so you can aim higher and, you know, go, go towards the stars. Releasing the stuff that weighs you down makes it easier for you to kind of enjoy and work, walk around feeling lighter. So rock on, people. Yeah, many people have too many things, but if and you're feeling that too. I honestly feel, I'll be, I'll be sincere with you right now, that my generation, our generations, we are saying enough of a lot of this stuff. And I say this for a couple of historic reasons. One is that we are still feeling, 100 years now, later, we are still feeling the aftermath of people who grew up in the Depression era of the 20s and 30s, of the lack of of things that people had that was a true scarcity. You know, I wasn't there, but I hear stories and I see things. And the reason there was also such a scarcity is because the, the, method of distrib of the methods of production and distribution were not what they are now. The ability for people to have credit, the ability to pe for people to hit a button and have something come to their house. We now have easy access to so many things that seems like a cool idea at the time, but if we take it to the extreme, it gets us to where we have, we think, when we start with not enough, we get that lack feeling. We say, oh man, we need some stuff, we need some stuff, we need some stuff. And at a certain point, you may not have even realized that you hit kind of your, your just right point, your set point. 
But the way we live in our in our society says the more the better, if a little bit, you know, and so then we try to get more and more and more and more and more. Now, even if you look at the, the screen right now where I'm talking about this, notice that I tend to put my hands near my heart where the set point is because that's when you feel good. And the crazy thing is, is when I talk to my clients about what they have, they will often say, I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I'm underwater. I am suffocating. I can't breathe. So many things that we feel are felt in our bodies as well when we have too much, when we're in over our heads, when we're drowning. So I want you to think of this, is every time you remove something from your home that isn't it doing it for you anymore, it's going to be easier to breathe. It's going to be easier to do the fun things because like, you just won't have as much cleaning and organizing to do. Now I'm like whispering this to you as if anybody's home with me. My husband's at a gig, he's not. But I will share with you, we have people coming over from out of state. They've never been to our house. Ever since I've become decluttered and, and learned this and just maintained these little boring, stupid habits, it takes me no time to get my house guest ready because it's already really good ready for me because I'm the guest in my house 24-7. So there are so many good things to be gotten that aren't things at all, but good feelings to get when you declutter. Okay, enough of me yakking. Let me go back to the questions. Okay. All right. Uh-huh. Okay. Lovers and rubs and hugs and stuff is saying, retired go-getter now that now have health issues that have slowed me down, but still addicted to buying. I'm gonna have to face it. I'm addicted to buying. Get curious. Ask yourself without judgment. No judgment. This is a judgment-free zone. We, we quiet down the judgment and we, we amplify the curiosity. We turn the volume down on the judgment and we get curious your heart is in it when you're curious get curious why you're addicted to buying i bet it makes you feel good when you're buying when you buy yourself something treat yourself right but the consequence is is that dopamine hit that 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 good feeling isn't long lasting all the time when you do that stuff trust me i've done enough spontaneous buying of stuff i know that feeling but then sometimes by the time i get it home I'm like, oh, now what do I do with it? You know, so changing your ways of thinking and feeling about shopping, about stuff, about owning things, about what it means to have money. Money you can spend on whatever you want. What do I want to spend money on? I'm going to buy whatever I want. They can't tell me I can't. I got the money. Or maybe you don't have the money. Maybe you're like, charge it. Wasn't that um, Wilma and Betty? Charge it. Get curious about that. And, and retirement is a wonderful time for you to actually have the time to reflect on those things and ask yourself some questions and see what you can figure out about it. And you can do something about this. This is the one message I would just love to share with everybody is if something's not going well in your life, there, there are things externally that we have very little control over. But if something's bugging you, if it's giving you, you've got that bug and feeling. If you're feeling bugged, you can do something about that. Okay, I just want to offer that to you. Okay, I love it. Some Facebook Marketplace things. You Facebook market pe market book people. Thank you for help helping out your fellow sellers. Now, I my sister has sold things on Facebook Marketplace. I never got into it because by the time the bloom was off the rose, as my mother would say, of, of selling stuff, I was kind of done with it. So I never got into it. Um, all right, do you think that's an excuse? Okay, artist Kelly Weiler, I missed your first one. But talking about an excuse, to, you know, I feel like I just need to get it gone. If you feel like you just need to get it gone, then just get it gone. And I'm not saying that like just get it gone. I'm saying it like it can be that easy. You can make a decision. You can feel a feeling and make a decision to say instead of this thing I'm holding on to, it's time for me to let it go. And what really is going to be the game changer is when you feel like it's, when you feel ready, when you feel, not even ready, when you feel like it's time, it's time. And what you're going to notice is when you release that stuff, it's not going to feel the pain that you were afraid of. What you're going to realize is, oh, that felt good. Ooh, I feel lighter. Oh my gosh. I love looking around my house now when the, when the counters are clean. So notice what you'll get. Okay. Um, I feel great giving away because some people just don't have money, says Kay. Yeah. Wendy Rose, hell yeah, I'm taking new clients. I am. I always make room for people. People that I work with, who I like to work with anyway, and we find that out if we're a good match. And if you like to work with me and I like to work with you, um, 
yeah, destinationdeclutter.com. Schedule a consultation. I work in um, a 10-session package, 10 one-hour sessions on Zoom. Typically, it's once a week for 10 weeks. And then if you want to purchase another package, in person to another package. I've got people who I've been working with almost an entire year. And they are getting so much out of it. And I am learning so much about them and, and what makes them tick. And they're learning about what makes them tick. So, yeah, totally anybody, all y'all. If you're even cur- if you're curious about what paid coaching is like, um, schedule a consultation. And we'll have just a ca- casual convo on Zoom. I ask you some questions. You give me some answers. If we're a good fit, I tell you about coaching. If it feels right to you, the length, the price, the, how it works. If it, Here's the deal. You've purchased stuff. All this stuff you've purchased, you've spent money on something you thought was going to make you feel good, and it maybe did for a while. What I want to tell you is I know, because I've spent money on my own coaching, is that it is a it is an investment and not because of the money. The, the thought of investment is something that you get the value out of long after you've spent the money. When you buy a television, you're one and done. You get it. But when you invest in something, it pays dividends. It pays you for years. Coaching will help you through all sorts of stuff. Anyhow. Um, all right. What else do we have? I love it. Strong Silver Soul Sister says, good morning. I am folding laundry and listening. Nice to see you. Pixel Pill Book. Uh, Pe- Pixel Pitbull. <laughs> nice to see you as well. Yes. If I was gifted something, I try to gift it when I no longer need it or want it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And I want you to think of this too. I just like to offer up these ideas to get some... Just maybe some just new perspectives, looking at things from a different perspective, from curiosity and not judgment. But think about things you've been gifted that you don't really care for the gift. You may like the gifter, you know, but the person is trying to give you something. This It's, it's a thing that says, hey, oh, that's right. I was going to talk about this. Hey, I saw this and it made me think of you here. Here's a here's a physical representation of me thinking of you. Oh, thank you. They give it to you. That was really nice. You thought of me. It's not about the gift. The gift is just an excuse to say, I was thinking about you. So if you if you don't like the gift, that's okay. It doesn't mean you don't like the gifter. All right. Um, hope that helps. Uh, good morning, Tammy E. And C. Um, thank you so much. Oh, I love it. Tammy is in, in E and in, in NC is saying, good morning all. Beth, thank you so much. I'm 85% done with going through 60 years of stuff. High five. High five, lady. That is awesome. That is great. Congratulations on your work. And here's the reason I coach the way I coach. is because I know there's a different feeling when somebody does something for you Versus doing something for yourself. And I like the feeling of getting stuff done myself. Now, I'm not saying you're doing it alone. But when you show up and make the changes in your life, there is like a satisfaction and a confidence and a check me out. Look what I did type of feeling. If, if, I, can, if I can take my house and turn it, you know, oh my God, I was about to sing Silent E. I will stop. Um... If I can do this, I can do anything. I love it. Dana says, I gave away multiple extra bird feeders on the Buy Nothing app. Yay, the birds, thank you. And the person who didn't have bird feeders will thank you. You know, Loopy 2 p.m., I love, I'm love. i glad you love the lives. Great advice and ideas. Yay, good stuff. We got good people here. That's the thing I love. Somebody said once, and I almost don't want to say the T-R-O double hockey sticks word, but we rarely get them. And if we do, we shoo them away because we got a wonderful community of people here. And it's different people all the time. You know, I tend to recognize certain names that show up, but there's new people all the time. So welcome. Welcome. Smiles, everyone. Smiles. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Uh, fant- <laughs> welcome to my kitchen. Um, okay. I sing for you now. I used to live a decluttered life. Now I'm d- knee deep with the stuff. I think I'm losing my mind. Okay. If you've lost your mind, hopefully you can find it. It's around here somewhere. <laughs> That's my family motto, my, my family of origin. Uh, what I will say is your mental health has something to do with how your home, how, you're, how you handle and decide and do things with about stuff. Your mental health, your physical health. There's so much more involved in decluttering, more than just buying clear containers for your Cheerios. Okay? Sorry, TikTok shop, not sorry. So if your mental health is is manifesting itself in a way that your house is getting a little bit out of control. OMFG, for yourself and for the people in your life, 
please get some help for yourself, okay? Um, it's the it's going to help you with the decluttering and everything, okay? Um, it also depends on now. I don't know, you know, how old people are, what what gender you are, how you identify. I don't know none none of that, but I will say for me as a female woman, heterosexual gal, in her now, I want to say mid, but it's almost like early to late. 50s because I can't believe I'm almost going to be 60 in a few years your body will change and your brain is part of your body and your brain is the one that either makes it your brain and your your head and your heart make it easy to make decisions or difficult to make decisions and so if your if your physical body and mental body aren't firing out like the way you want it to love yourself enough to get some help on it okay I love it um, I love it. Tammy, it, it's, this is so funny. Tammy and North NC, y'all, it has taken a year, but listen to her. Baby steps will progress to a progressive clean out. Tammy, I love that. That's awesome. I love it. Okay. And look at you. You're inspiring other people by doing, notice what you do. Notice what you do when you show up for yourself and you do these things for you. You are encouraging people you don't even know to say, man, if she can do it, I bet I could do it too. You know, when I saw somebody, I'm like, oh, hey. There's somebody who said she didn't get her act together until she was in her 40s. Well, I'm in my 40s and 50s. Maybe there's hope for me. There is. There's hope for you. All is not lost. It doesn't matter if it's been 60 years, 70 years. The moment that you start saying, I don't want any of this, I want, I want to have a different life, and you start doing things for it, you will be living in the life you want because you'll be on that journey. And it is so cool. It is so fun. All righty. So glad you found me too. I love it. Nurse Nita just got rid of 100 cookbooks. I love it. Yeah. Oh, user 227544162900 says, <laughs> so modern. Is there a mantra I could say to keep me going through the declutter? Yes. I like to say, as you even see where I say mantra, I'm from Boston, so I got a wicked lot of mantras, okay? Here are some of mine. I should probably do a top 10 hits, but the, every little bit helps. I have a mug. I wrote it on a mug to remind myself when I feel like I'm not making progress. Every little bit helps. If I was at my desk and I showed you my book that I've been writing in since 2002, and I actually have one from before then, that I have gotten into the habit of every day writing down all the good stuff that I did to get me to where I want to go and all the good stuff that happens to me and know that each one of those little bullet points is adding up to this life that I freaking love. And I didn't it wasn't one and done. It was all these little tiny steps. Put one foot in front of the other. Okay. Every little bit helps. And the other thing that might help you too is when you're doing a step and a step and a step. I was thinking about this because I think the Boston Marathon is this. Is anybody here? Actually, if somebody, I, don't, I might miss it on here, but I'm thinking the marathon is this Monday because I think Massachusetts people got an extra day on their taxes. Am I right? Um... Everybody says, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. You know what? It's not a marathon either. It's a freaking journey. It is one foot in front of the other, walking at a pace that feels good to you, or driving, because I use the driving metaphor. You are doing this for the rest of your life. It's not over in 26 miles, and then you're exhausted. That also is not a good way to think about it. I want you to pace yourself, but also it's not over in 26 miles. It's finding a way to work with your brain, your, your head, your heart, your stuff, your home, in a way that's going to give you that long-term place that you want. So having a destination in mind, even you can tell, I have habitual ways of moving my body when I talk about this. And I'm pointing upwards because in my mind, I also feel like one of those, like, um, what do you call it? Like a religious statue. Look at me. I'm a, the patron saint of decluttering. Um, uh, having a destination in mind, why you're doing it, why am I doing this? Where am I headed? Why am I doing this? If you don't have an answer to that, you're going to give up. I know I did. I'm like, why am I doing this? I don't know. I'm going to stop. With, the, with your destination, if it's not compelling enough, it's, if it doesn't spark a, if you're not excited to get there, everybody revisit why you're doing yourself. Check in with yourself. And if the spark has gone out, either create something new to get the spark going, reignite the spark. But when the spark goes out, just check in with yourself. Okay, but every little bit helps. Every day I'm doing this, it's a step closer to where I want. I'm further away from where I was and I'm closer to where I want to be. 
All right, I hope that helps. I know you're gonna hear me. Okay, sa thank you, Kara, Marathon Monday. So um, I know I gotta, I'm gotta. i gonna totally do a TikTok video about the marathon. Tick, tock, vid, marathon. See what I'm doing right here? This is what you should do too. Not do a TikTok video about the marathon. You have an idea in your head, get the ideas, get the thoughts in your head down on paper so you remember them. Marathon. That way, your brain is freed up to do the things it does wonderfully, which is creativity and problem solving. And just hanging out and being chill. And it does not, you don't use your brain like a filing cabinet for certain things, for stuff you want to do. Write these things down. Okay. Um, Sabrina saying, my husband passed away almost three years ago and I struggled putting and thinning his things. Of course you do, my dear. Yeah. You know, of course you do. Because some of our stuff brings up feelings. A lot more than you think, people. Notice how somebody up thread had a thought, I can't get rid of this because it spent a lot of money from it. And I say get rid of, but like, what do I do with this thing that I don't want? What do I do with this thing? It's giving me feelings, but the feelings are, are making it difficult to say, should I stay or should I go? As the clash would say. Your husband's things are, oh my God, it's not even, my husband is just away, but it makes you feel a feeling, right? Feelings are okay. Feelings remind us that we're human. Feelings remind us that we had a wonderful time with that person. And you know what? Hearts are squishy things. Um, do it at a pace that feels right to you. Don't let anybody bully you or boss you around or don't feel like you're doing it. You're not doing it at a pace that feels good. But when you feel ready to go through some of his stuff, I will share this with you sentimental clutter. Sentimental stuff is the stuff that's going to do two things. If we think of a road trip, right? So we've got surface clutter, we've got stored clutter, and we've got sentimental. Surface clutter, easy peasy. This is when you're flying down the highway, boom, boom, boom. Oh my gosh, um, it, this is so easy. This is great. Oh my gosh. It's, all, it's not always like that. Then you've got stored clutter, which is stuff that makes you feel some of those feelings of making decisions, and you have to make decisions. Those types of roads slow you down. Sentimental clutter is the stuff that's going to show the slowest progress and take the most energy. I'm just sharing that with you so you can be prepared that you could whiz around the whole house and do the stuff that's on the surface and still have energy to spare. Or you could spend a half an hour going through a box of your parents' old stuff and be like, I'm done. I am exhausted. So notice that. Okay. And see, Tammy is saying, Sabrina, it's okay. It took me eight years. You will know when it's time. Yeah. Um, FLD Core is saying, um, so my heart is with you, my dear. Okay. And everybody who is struggling, all of us struggle with what to do with this sentimental stuff, myself included. But it's a worthy journey to ask, why am I doing this? Why, you know, just, just, this is where coaching can help. Okay. Um, best advice on decluttering parents' large home? Depends on if the parents are in it or not. Totally different scenario. If the parents are in it, work with them make them comfortable in their home, do whatever you can to make them comfortable, but also start making decisions for yourself. If you know that when they're gone, you're going to have to deal with it, start making the plan now. I got a plan. I totally have a plan because I'm going up in a few weeks to Massachusetts. Can you hear it in my accent? I'm going up to Massachusetts to help my mother. I'm helping um, clean out the remnants of the stuff that's in the attic because I want to get up there before it gets too hot. And I'm telling you, she's been in the house since 1969. I know there's boxes there that my dad moved up there and they've been up there as long as that. So work at the pace of your parents. But if they're not there, I say, pick out the stuff you want, hire an estate sale company and get it over and done with sooner rather than later. And that's a time when I feel like paying somebody else to deal with it is money well spent on your own physical and mental health. Okay. Hope that helps. Um, okay. t -Site is saying, I'm feeling like ignoring my issues today, including the sentimental clutter I could easily go through. Oh my God, go for it. Seriously? <laughs> Don't, if it feels difficult, it's going to be difficult. Wait until it feels easier. I mean, some things we have to do, whether we want to or not. Hello, taxes, right? However, if you don't feel like doing it, find something else to do. I have some things I have to do. I will, I'll share this with you. I have a couple of clients that just, um, pre concluded their, um, 
their coaching uh, packages with me and I send a little feedback and testimonial thing to them. I need to get that done. But I was exhausted yesterday. I've been running around. So I honored myself and said, I'm not going to do it right now. I did other things though. And the th- so I will say, if you don't feel like doing that, what's something you do feel like? What's something that feels simple and easy and kind of fun? Do those things. All of it's going to help. But also, if you do consistently find yourself avoiding doing some things, just get curious about that and and kind of pop the hood and see what's underneath, okay? Um, but yeah, if you don't feel like dealing with stuff, life is short. Go out and play, you know? Your, your stuff's going to be there whether you've dealt with it or not. Um, and maybe you'll feel better about it the, some other time, you know? Yeah, heartfelt stuff is so hard to find. It's, it is. It can be difficult to find homes for things. But you know, Kay, I will say this. The stuff that is heartfelt to you means nothing to somebody else. There's no heart in it. Here's the thing. You've got a thing. Like I could show you this spoon, right? You're like, oh, look, it's a little silver spoon. I could show you this. I'm going to show you this because it was kind of like a rehoming thing. This little metal cup. Okay, it's a little metal cup. I know. My story up here and in here, this has my initials on it. This has my date of birth. This is my little like christening cup, right? Or maybe they poured the water on you. I don't know. I was little. I was busy. Um, what do I do with this? I don't know. It's sterling silver from Wallace, made in USA. It's got my name on it. Makes it even worse because it's then it's. Trust me. Oh my gosh, the last thing you want to do is have that stuff with any of your words. And talk about sentimental. So you know what I did with mine? I have it in these little spoons. These came from my mother-in-law. She used to collect these. Now she's gone. I put them in here and I use them to stir my tea. So get creative with the stuff you use. I'm not going to get christened anymore. But um, okay. The heart, the story. To you, it was just a metal, a metal um, cup. To me, it has a lot more meaning. But it's also, at the end of the day, it is a metal cup and it is just some spoons. So you can, there is a story and there is a thing. We tend to combine them. Because we've combined them, we also have the power to separate them. And you can decide what you do with that. You can keep the story. How can you, what is a way you can keep the story and remove the stuff? Okay? Uh, yeah, totally get rid of the stuff, junk that doesn't matter first. Yeah, there's always going to be that surface stored sentimental. Surface it's like surface. It's like superficial. It's like, you know, the dishes, the laundry, the like all the stuff that just, you know, is, is not where it's supposed to be. It's not the stuff that you actually have to make decisions on, except where does this go? Okay. Now, Becky is saying, sitting in that right now with my parents' stuff. Okay, Becky, Becky, and people of our generation, anybody who's got family ahead of them, above them, heed this. What's going to be the easiest way for you to deal with this. What is the easiest? What's the thing that's going to be the least arduous, the least energetic? What do you, do you want any of their stuff? The answer can be no. The answer can be some of it. The answer is, I don't know. The answer is like, I, I don't know. The answer is, I don't know your, your answer. Find out the easiest way, figure out the easiest way and honor that because all the only thing none of us get back in the world is time. So the time you spend hemming and hawing and cleaning and posting and writing and, you know, all that stuff is time you could be better spent doing other things. Okay. I say the quicker you get through it, the easier it will be on you. But work at a pace that feels good to you. Don't drag it out unnecessarily. If it's necessary for you to drag it out, drag it out. Work at a pace that feels good for you. But I will say sometimes having that destination of just getting it effing done can motivate you to Keep on showing up, much like German Maid saying about your shed. Sm- sl- progress, showing up again and showing up and showing up and taking the next step, taking the next step. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. K Dubs, when you were going through your parents' storage two hours later, my siblings and I were drained. Yes, because we are human feeling creatures. And stuff tells us a story. And when we hear stories, why do we have stories? Because they make us feel feelings. They feel connections. And feel, and feeling can be tiring. Especially when the feelings and the tirings, the feelings and the stories are connected to people who are no longer here with us. So it's bittersweet, you know? Like the hoodoo gurus once said, it's bittersweet. Um, Know that you're going to get into that. Same thing with Becky. Going through your parents' stuff, totally going to drain you. 
Know that and plan accordingly. Know that that's going to be when you get the crappiest gas mileage and know to plan to get to a certain point and then stop and then go out for dinner. Take a nap. Come back later when your gas tank is full. Okay? Yeah. T-Site is saying take, take pictures is helpful. I love this. I love this. When I spend hours and get drained, I don't want to do it for months. Yeah. You know what? Um, yeah. Train. Okay. Never been able to train yourself to break things into small tasks. You know, I love it that you say it is. It is a training. That's what coaching is really, is I share a set of skills that has worked for me, has worked for people I know, has worked for paying clients. It works. Having somebody there with you like a tutor, like a personal coach, like a driver's ed teacher, next to you, metaphorically, of course, um, while you're learning it and helping you where you're not getting it and showing up and even sometimes, honestly, sometimes just the 10-week package that I offer, just the 10 weeks of repetition reminds you that at least once a week, you kind of have to do this thing, right? And then you say, oh, it's so strange. When I sit there, there and she, Beth says, hey, I'm going to mute myself and you write down the things and you let me know when I'm done. Every time I, I suggest a client, how can you break that down? How can you write, do this? They say, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. Like it's almost silly. You know, it's like me. Like I know my body feels physically better when I eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Well, actually more vegetables and fruit. But do I eat them all the time? No. But then when I'm like, oh yeah, it makes sense. I feel better, but do I do it? We're just, we're humans. We're not machines. So maybe you need training. Maybe I could be your coach, you know? Figure it out. Figure out what's going to work for you, okay? Um, okay, Lab is saying, how do you handle a messy family? How do you handle a hungry man, the man handlers? It was like a, of course, I'm Gen X. I don't even know why I have that commercial in my head. Um, how do you handle a messy family? I used to be Nate, but it's so hard to stay motivated. Um, this is when, I mean, I don't have kids. So take, take that into account when I'm saying these things. But when I talk to my clients with, with, with children, I think the most important thing is to train them to take care of their own stuff and not in a, not in, in a collaborative way. You are in a collaborative environment. Everybody should be responsible for their own stuff. And that is a good life lesson to have. Now, it all depends on how you approach that, whether it's going to seem like you're bossing me around and all that kind of stuff. And at a certain point, if people are used to having people take care of themselves, take, you know, somebody else taking care of it, of course, they're going to bitch and moan when you try to upend this thing that's working out for them. But it's worth thinking of is noticing where people in your home have habits, habits of putting stuff down and not picking it up. Habits of leaving dirty dishes in their bedrooms. Habits of eating food in their bedrooms. Hab habits of keeping their, you know, dropping the f towels on the floor. Habits of laundry on the floor. Habits of piling up the laundry until there's no underpants left. Habits, habits, habits. You can change a habit. You can change a habit. Now I'm thinking of Elvis. <laughs> okay. Um, but what if it is your husband? <laughs> You love him, right? Answer that yourself. Hopefully you do. Collaborate. You guys work together. I am blessed enough to have a really awesome relationship with my husband, but boy, is he so much more cluttered than me. I see his telephone and he's at the telephone. I'm so old. I see his cell phone. He's got like 40,000 unread emails, 7,200 text, met, like all those red dots. His room is so much more cluttered than any other part of the house. Have a come to come to Jesus moment with your husband. Not no, that's that's almost too dramatic. Have a conversation with him. Express to you, him how this is not working out for you guys and if mama ain't happy ain't nobody happy. Okay? Notice his habits and get try not to get judgy. Get curious. Why do you do that? Could you do something else? Could you please practice this? Ask him. Yes, stop, collaborate and listen. Exactly. It's just like ice, ice baby, you know, um, it, you are worth having that conversation because if you're going around feeling not good about this stuff, then, um, he's feeling it. He's feeling it when you're like giving him the side eye and picking up something in like a, in a harumph, you know, that's, that's like the short term, like, oh yeah, I'll show you, but secretly you're seething inside. Okay. He knows already he's like pig pen. He can change. 
Now, I don't know if you can change him. Here's the deal. He can change or you can change your mind is how you feel about him and his mess. You can love him like pig pen. He's got the dust of Mesopotamia and Nebuchadnezzar around him. You love him anyway. Love is always going to be the best place to come from. When you love somebody, you will forgive them their trespasses as they have forgiven you who trespassed against you, right? <laughs> uh, okay, but literally all. I'm being serious. I, I kid, but I'm serious. Love is the best thing to feel for yourself. Why am I doing this decluttering? Because I love myself and I don't want to feel crappy anymore. I love myself that I want to spend this one precious life that I have doing things on the planet that I'm not doing now because I'm surrounded by a bunch of crap I bought at Target. Okay? Mm -hmm. And love yourself enough to do the things. Love the people around you while you do the things and love them enough to let them know what's going on. That what's, what has been going on ain't working no more. So I'm going to love myself enough and love you enough to say, I love this relationship. But boy, you're pissing me off when you're like, when you're like Pigpen, I end up being like Lucy. Okay? And I would much rather us be more like Linus and Sally. Okay? Or maybe even just like Snoopy. You know? So notice these things. Okay? Okay. Rain of love. Doesn't even know where to start. You're, you're not alone. Where I want you to start, and I want everybody to think about this, is your stuff has an effect on your physical body, your nervous system body, your mental health, all of it. So the place I always want you to think of is, even before you decide on your destination, because if you're in an active, like if you're a nervous energy, if you're, I can't even use the, like the, the official words bore me, but if like, if you're all activated, if you're all like riled up, if you're like, I don't even know where to start, what I want to say is that can be a feeling of overwhelm, too much, overloaded, overwhelm. I want you to think of the word over, O-V-E-R, over your head, and want you to think of the word, the, an opposite. I'm always working on opposites, top down, side to side, all these things. I want you to think of the word down because the word down can help you so much. Slowing down. Seriously, breathing down is going to always be the first one. Breathe down into the bottom of your lungs. Slow down your exhale twice as long. Breathe down, slow down. Calming down your nervous system. Quieting down your nervous system. Go to a quiet place. Go in your car and lock the doors and just be quiet. Slow down, quiet down, breathe down, calm down, all the downs. And then tune into what's up here and write down some stuff that's in your head. Where do you know where to start? There's really no wrong or right way. What is the wrong or right way is either, either starting or not starting. So how can you get started? Sit down. Download your thoughts. Take your thoughts from your head down onto paper. Write it down. And then chunk it down. Chunk it down. Say, okay, well, I need to do the kitchen. I could start in the kitchen. All right. I'm going to, um, you know, put away the vitamins empty the dishwasher, and clear off the table. Write those down. Oh, there's so much on the table. Okay, chunk it down even further. Oh, well, that's mail. Those things need to go to the mailbox. That needs to be filed. Those need to go down the basement. Chunk it down. Yeah, everybody, overwhelm. I want you to think of the word down. If you, if you remember nothing else as a nice little mantra, anytime you are overwhelmed by anything, that is your body's reaction to too much, overwhelm, Think, looking at the whole thing, don't even know where, Shh. calming down, slowing down, breathing down, quiet down, writing down, chunking down. It's going to help, okay? This, you can't, it's going to, when you don't feel good, you're not going to do good. When you feel better, when you start to feel better, when you calm down. Notice even if you're looking at the screen right now, my, my, the way my body is moving is almost like if you had a cat or a dog or an animal or a kid that was all in a tiz and you knew that there was not, you know, it, and you, you just wanted to calm them down. You would say, shh, you would, you, would, you, would console, you would comfort them. Give yourself some comfort. Notice me, it's like I'm petting a pup or I'm, I'm stroking the hair of a little kid who's having a, t a fit. Shh, it's okay. It's okay, breathe. 
Yep, breathe. Okay. Be patient. It's going to take some time. Notice that. That can make you feel better. You can do that. Soothe yourself. Even just you can pet yourself. Sometimes you can't feel like you're going to breathe, and you say, okay, whew, all right, I got this. You know, you try to relax those muscles that are all tensed up. You know, you move your body. You stretch. You move. You get on. And I'm telling you, when you feel better, feel. Feeling is a thing that's in you. When you feel even a little bit better, you're going to do a little bit better. And when you feel a little bit better and you do a little bit better, the neat thing is, isn't that doing a little bit better? It's going to make you feel better. So then you want to do more and you do more and you feel more. And the next thing you know, I'm talking like Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. Okay. But seriously, calming down your nervous system, spending the time. It doesn't even, I, if you timed that, it probably took me two minutes to walk through. Curated closet. What is this about? I'm Beth. Nice to meet you. Um, decluttering life coach. Decluttering life coach. And people often ask, say to me, I don't know where to start and I'm overwhelmed. And what I'm doing is I am um, helping people realize that before you even start decluttering or curating your closet, you have to feel better. You have to feel like you can do it. And a lot of that is getting your nervous system in a space where you say, okay, now I feel like I can go into my closet and make decisions about what I keep and what I what I do because I know that when I go in there, there my my clothing is going to tell me stories. My clothes are going to tell me, oh, guess what? You could wear these last year. I don't know if you're going to fit into them. Oh, remember when you used to wear all those fun clothes and now you're all wearing black? You know why are you doing that? Oh, you gained weight, huh? There's a story behind your stuff that's up here and in your in your body. When you learn how to recognize that, that's how I coach. I coach one on one with clients and um, all over the country, um, helping them learn the skills of decluttering. And a lot of it is not just surface clutter about, oh, you know, light to dark and small to large and all the stuff I learned in um, as a visual merchandiser for decades, but it's about how, you, how your stuff makes you feel and how you feel even about approaching to do your stuff. So when you take that into account, when you have a tool in your toolkit to say, oh, that's right, I feel overwhelmed by all this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna calm it down, I'm gonna chunk it down, and then I'm gonna write it down. You make a plan, you know? So today I'm thinking about this. So it's 9.52. Um, quick shout out. If anybody has enjoyed what you're hearing here, just even for a smidge, I do these TikTok lives quite often. Today is the first one. I won't do one for another couple of days because I'm on the road again. On the road again. Uh, but I will be back um, next week. Uh, if you're interested in this, just um, follow my page here on TikTok. That's probably, a, that's always the good first step. Um, and then the second one is I do have a mailing list. Now, the mailing list is free for now. It's always going to be free. What am I saying for now? Um, and the people on the mailing list get the best stuff. The people on the mailing list find out long before anybody else when I'm going to do a TikTok Live. I send them the schedule. Um, we're doing a group Zoom, actually. We do a free group kind of coaching Zoom once a month for free just for the people on the mailing list. If you're interested in that, destinationdecluttered.com um, and sign up for the mailing list. Also, if you are thinking, hey, you know what? I would love to have this woman all to myself. A client literally just said that. I wanted you all to myself. Like, you're asking, answering all these questions for everybody else. I just want you to work with me. That's one-on-one -on -one coaching. All I do is I offer a, I offer a 10-session package, one hour a week on Zoom, and 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever works for you. We work at a pace that works for you. And it's all about you. It has nothing to do with me except that I am there to teach you some skills that you will have for the rest of your life so you can think better and feel better about what you're doing. And it's the cool thing is, it's not just about clutter. It's going to affect in a positive way. It's going to touch so many other areas of your life. Okay? I was There we go. Um, okay. LA64367, it says, I have thrown it in bags to, for sorting later. In the biz, and I work with ADHD folks, and I have it in my family, too, so I know. We call those DOOM bags. It's an acronym, even though it does feel like DOOM, DOOM and GLOOM. Didn't organize, only moved. Um, if you sort it later, that's great. Catch yourself when you're not sorting it later. When you're not sorting it later, get curious as to why you're not. Becky, nice to see you. Thanks so much. I'm glad you like it. Spread the word. Shine up, you know. <laughs> Okay. Saturday mornings are the best time for these. Thank you. I thought I thought they would be pretty good. I don't coach on Saturdays because I've got my own life and I want you to have your life too. 
Um, but I, I do enjoy doing the Saturday morning ones before I go to, you know, yoga, walk down the farmer's market, whatever. Um, okay. So I just want to help you realize that you can do something about your clutter. Even if you for decades have not been able to, I grew up messy. I was cluttered, whatever. Doesn't really matter. As long as you're willing to get curious and non-judgmental about yourself to discover where you're, where there are just some steps that you're stumbling on with the way you're doing it. Not only was I a visual merchandiser, Terry was saying I was a visual merchandiser too. Yeah, I worked for Pier 1 Imports. I worked for Mikasa. I worked for Filene's um, for a wicked long time. And I was also an art history major. So do I know how to make a place look good? Tell me. This place is merchandised and delightful. I love it. But for decades, I also had a, like, you know, stuff down the basement and stuff in closets because I'm also a collector and I liked to sell. And then I sold stuff and then I inherited some things. So I know all of this stuff. But I want to share with you what has helped me and my clients so that you also kind of get just a different skill set so you can do something about it and changing your habits so the stuff doesn't build up as much as it would anyway. It just feels so much better, you guys. I don't really do this so it looks better to the outside world. No. I go on. I have become a coach to help you feel better. And one of the ways that I have found very helpful to help people learn the skills of life coaching, as it were, is to start with your clutter because your clutter can make you feel a feeling. And clutter is just stuff. So you can, when you'll realize when you start to remove the things that aren't working and it feels better, you practice that with your clutter and maybe you just stop there. That's maybe all you want. But at a certain point, you're like, you know what? I don't want that feeling in my life anymore. How can I get that? Oh, you know what? Maybe I, I don't hang out with that person. You know, maybe I don't say yes to that opportunity that I didn't want to do anyway. Okay? This is, this is for you. This is for you to feel better. And if your clutter is not making you feel good, we can do something about it. I love it. Virtual Cat says we took two more van loads to Savers this week. There we go. Okay. All right. Let me see. I got three more minutes. Um, all righty. Angie feel depressed and don't continue. Yeah. The way I like to teach people about coaching or excuse me about decluttering is doing it so that at the end of it, you feel good. So what can you do today? That's going to, no matter how small, that's going to make you feel good about what you did after you've done it. Do that and remember that feeling. If it's not feeling good, maybe there's like, it's, it's almost like if it's not feeling good, maybe you're doing it wrong. Maybe there's a better way that doesn't feel so bad to do it. You know, are you going to continue to walk along with like, you know, a splinter in your foot or stop and say, what's making this hurt? Oh, I'm going to pull the splinter out and do something different. You know? Oh, I love it. I love it that, um, I, it's, there's Jay is saying, Hey Beth, hello. Again, I say how my spring cleaning decluttering has helped my mental health. Yeah. I am not a licensed mental health professional, nor do I ever care to be one, but boy, howdy, do I know that there is a connection between clutter and the way you feel. And it's up here and it's in here. Now, as I said, I am a I I bring my all of my life coaching skills, all of my virtual um my visual merchandising skills, all of my design skills, my process engineer skills, all of these things that I know, I have this toolkit. All I want to do is share it with you. I if you need it here, have this, have this. The great thing is, is when you share ideas, it's not like, here's my hammer. Oh, no, I don't have one. It's, it's, it's up here. So you have the idea. Now I have it. Kind of ideas worth spreading, you know. It's the more you find out, the more you learn these skills, then you can, you can help somebody else with their stuff, you know. I know. Nurse Jackie says, cleaning coffee cup cabinets this AM. How do they accumulate? A cup at a time. Mm-hmm. It's true. And getting in the habit of saying, oh, that's kind of a kind of fun mug. You know, I, maybe I'll have that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Nurse Anita says you help so many people. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, Daisy Dogs is saying, I live close to Savers. I will have to go see what you gave up. Yeah. You know what? And it's fun. I got to share with you people because you people, you, because I, I have given away stuff and I have thrifted for the first, first port, literally the first 40 plus years of my life going to thrift stores was my happy place. And that was fun, 
and helpful. We furnished our home with pretty much stuff that we thrifted. It was fun and helpful until it wasn't. We had too much. And then we, we've we knocked it down. We've gotten to a good spot and it feels good. And now I just don't feel, I was thinking about this today. I don't want anything really. I don't need anything really, except for feeling a good feeling in my body and in my nervous system, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and thank goodness we have these um, thrift stores to give our stuff to right now, okay? I'm glad that I give you so much motivation. I, You know, here's the deal, though. I want to motivate you enough so that you learn how to motivate yourself. If, if the only time you get motivated is when I'm here, I haven't done my job well. What I want to leave you with is thoughts and feelings and actions you can take. Not just, oh, that's good, but I don't know how to apply it. Here, go clear off a table. Go put some trash. Go make even everybody today. Can you imagine how much better you would feel today if you just took a bag or a box and just filled it with some easy peasy stuff you don't want and practiced decluttering, brought it, put the, put the package together and brought it to a place and donated it. Notice how that feels. Now, I'm not saying get rid of your precious stuff. No, clutter is the stuff that doesn't do it for you anymore. Okay. Um, and you feel good when you do it. Yeah. I want peace more than stuff now. Right there with you. Right there with you. The feeling of peace. The feeling of peace. The, the sound of silence. The sound of peace in my brain, in my nervous system, in my life. Yeah. That's where I'm headed. Come along with. Okay? I'm so glad I'm helping you, you all. Um, as I said, if you haven't followed my page, please do so. If you know people who are struggling with clutter, let them know I exist. Destination Decluttered here on TikTok. Um, my, my TikToks are recorded and for now... Just saying that for now, they're available to watch for free on my two YouTube channel. I might change that just to the people who are on the mailing list. So if you want to get on the mailing list, destinationdeclutter.com slash join. Also, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people all over the country um, because we coach on Zoom. 10-week package, paid coaching. If you're interested in that, if you would like me to be your one-on-one -on -one coach, we can do that. Go to my website, destinationdeclutter.com, schedule a consultation. We meet on Zoom. We see if it's a good fit. If it's a good fit, we move forward. Uh, sound good? I think so. Now I'm going to go do a little decluttering, do a little yoga, get ready for the people coming over and have a wonderful day and weekend. And I hope you do too. Okay? You got this. You can do it. Let's get it done and have some fun. Or let's have fun and get it done. Okay? There we go, folks. See ya. Bye. I'm like, bye. There we go. Bye.